everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be planting seven amazing perennials. Oh my gosh, these are so beautiful. And these are going to be for part sun to shade gardening. I will introduce you to the owner that I'm going to be doing this small job for. I will show you the area that I'm going to be doing, but let's get started before this heat gets to be too hot. going to be planting today is I'm going to be planting some chocolate Persian Lysimachia ground cover. This is gorgeous. I have shown this before in my videos. This is red stems, beautiful yellow flowers, and the more shade these get, the more it flowers profusely. This is great for dry shade gardening as well. I'm also going to be doing one of my favorite alliums, and this is the Beacon Silver. This one grows these beautiful, beautiful pink flowers and it blooms profusely throughout the year. Look at this. How beautiful those two are going to complement each other. They're going to be gorgeous. This has pink flowers. These have little blue bell flowers and they only last until late spring. So they'll be gone fairly quickly, but these will stay on all season long. I will also be doing some coral bell. This are carnival watermelon. Isn't this just gorgeous? This is beautiful. Everything here is going to complement each other in one form or another. This one here is also an evergreen throughout the winters in zone 8B. This is gorgeous. The flowers are gorgeous. It's going to complement the Lysimachia as well as the next plant, which is a Japanese painted fern. Look at how gorgeous this painted fern is. It's just starting to get all of its foliage out and it's just gorgeous and it's going to look beautiful. Then I'm going to be planting three hostas and I'll show them to you one by one. This one has a little bit of a blue hue. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's called First Frost and it's going to get about 16 to 36 inches in diameter and height in its full maturity. So right now it's small, but every year thereafter it's going to get bigger and bigger. Then over here I have the Loyalist Hosta. It reminds me a lot of the Pirate uh, Hosta and it's just gorgeous. It's going to have some white to pop out. This one here will get uh, about 16 to 18 inches high and about up to 18 to 24 inches in diameter. And then back here I have Silk Road. Isn't that just gorgeous? So this one here is going to get about 10 to 18 inches tall and 30 inches in diameter. Then we have a Bleeding Heart here. This is a spring bloomer, so it's pretty much done, but it will come back next spring looking just as gorgeous with these red Bleeding Hearts. Now this one is called a Dysantra uh, Spectable. Now this one is going to get about 24 by 24 inches in height and width. So it's going to be gorgeous. It's not a very tall bleeding heart, but it's going to feel out. It's going to be beautiful. Then I have one of my favorite grasses, and this is the Kona Japanese forest grass. This is gorgeous, and I absolutely love this. I love that it has this little stripe in the middle of yellow. Now keep in mind, that these can tolerate some sun. However, if they're too exposed to hot sun, these lines will fade out and then they will just become green. But they do great in part sun to shade. That is the best position for them. And that's where these are gonna go. A gorgeous oak leaf hydrangea. This is a ruby slipper. It's going to start blooming at any given time here. Buds are already set out for this year. But if you notice the leaves on this oak leaf, they're kind of uh, veiny. This is an issue that some plants have when you pick them up in a nursery because they have been in the same container for a long time. So they've depleted all the nitrogen, 
maybe some iron. So I will be establishing all my plants with fish fertilizer as I always do. And I will be doing it with a high nitrogen content. So I will show you that in a minute. I will be giving it a fish emollient. The first number is your nitrogen. That's what you want if that is an issue. So keep that in mind. And then last but not least, this is called an Orangella Japanese maple tree. This one here can tolerate more sun than the normal Japanese maples. Most of them, if they can handle some sun, filtered sun, or some damp lighting, but for the most part, they want to be protected from that blistering sun. But this one can handle more of direct light. So uh, keep that in mind if you're looking for Japanese maple trees. The other thing about this particular Japanese maple, this will grow an expansion of six feet tall, six feet wide over 15 years. But because it's already weeping, it's gonna to continue to weep down. So I think that covers all the plants that I'm going to be planting today. So I'm gonna go ahead and get busy. I will show you a before of what this area here looked like. I'm going to show you what it looks like now. And then once I'm completely done and planting, I will give you a walkthrough. Okay, you guys, I'm sitting with Basha and uh, she's my neighbor and I'm going to uh, do just a little area for her. Well, I'm so fortunate that I ran into you the other day and somehow we ended back here and talking about this little corner and about how long we've been neighbors. And uh, uh, I, I feel so honored that uh, Juanita is gonna help me to transform this neglected corner of my yard <laughs> into a beautiful, peaceful memorial area for my beloved cat wh whom I had for 18 years. Wow. Yeah. What was her, her name or his name? Her, her name was Penny. Penny. Oh. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a beautiful spot for Penny. Now there was some limbs over here that I cut. I didn't film that. I was just came to uh, drop off things and one thing led to another as always. <laughs> I ended up cutting back a lot and opening up the space a little bit more, digging around a little bit more. So this is what it looks like right now. I will be going from this point to this point, basically going around right here and in this spot. So it's very minimal weeding. And then I'm going to add some new soil and start digging, planting, and then mulching. So that's what's in When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Us crazy, but things are finally right. With you and I, the future is bright. Oh, you and I. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna call it a day, but I've got it all cleared out as you can see. It's very minimal weeds. I think there was maybe a handful, if that, of dandelions. The rest of it was probably some grape hyacinth and a little bit of grass that filtered over there, little patches. Outside of that, it was pretty weed free. So I'm guessing there's already uh, landscape material down here. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna put uh, some soil and start planting, but I'll uh, see you guys tomorrow on beat. I'm gonna go get me something to eat and call it a day. Okay, as you can see, I have everything laid out behind me already. Now I still need to cut a couple of these branches off because they're kind of sticking out this way. And maybe just one or two in the very back, but outside of that, uh, it's done. All I'm going to be doing now is adding uh, soil down and mulch and putting them in the ground. Now, again, I'm going to be, be adding fish fertilizer 
You know, I've had comments where people have said, I don't know anybody else who uses fish fertilizer. I, I love this stuff. I think this works really great. It's one fertilizer for vegetables, for flowers. It's great for a lot of things. So I use it to establish plants at the very beginning. And then I typically don't use it after that. I also am going to be adding just a little bit of bone meal for the orangeola Japanese maple tree back there. And I will kind of go over at least uh, how to put that in the ground. But outside of that, I'm just gonna dig holes and put everything else in there. I got nothing to worry about when you're by my side. Mm -hmm. I got nothing to worry about when you're by my side. Got nothing to worry about when you're by my side. I got nothing to worry about when you're by my side. I bled from the wound for at least a year. Myself up. I reached out for the fire. You hoisted me up. You were there, holding my hand. I Whenever you're going to be planting a tree, you actually want twice the width of this container so that all the roots have room to grow, get comfortable in there. I will be adding some bone meal, some fresh uh, soil. This looks like it's really good soil, but I'm still going to give it some good amendments in here. Fish fertilizer, bone meal, and some new soil. Switching it up on the on the soil, but it's still good soil. So I'm just adding just a little bit of new soil. You don't want to plant your tree any more than right here. Make sure that that is above ground. I actually put my hole too deep, so it's always good to dig, measure, before you actually tuck it in. That should do it. I'm just gonna have a handful Bone meal. This will help establish the roots. Let's see, 
how far I got it. That's gonna be perfect. But you basically want it right here. You don't want it any, any deeper than this is going to be. Now I'm gonna give it fresh new uh, soil. I will give it some fish fertilizer, but it's always good to fill the hole up with water. Make sure it's well hydrated. So with Japanese maple trees, they don't like their feet wet. They like even moist soil. So adding uh, some bark around it is really nice to have. That way they can keep their feet nice and cool and just a little bit of moisture in there without over watering. Now, once it gets established, all these get established by next year, then all of these will need watering maybe once a week depending on the weather if it gets uh, really into the 90s maybe twice a week but make sure that it gets into the root system you just don't surplus water give it one good watering when you do water and it'll be good to go okay i'm just gonna put new soil in there I think the position looks good. Now something I like doing is I get like getting the back of my shovel and just tampering down, make sure that the Okay, you guys, that's going to do it for me. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love this. Now, Basha really loves it too. She's just out to dinner with some friends, so she wasn't able to join me today, but she absolutely loves it. Now, I did move in both of these containers into the garden just to add some more interest in here, and I think it looks really nice, if I can't say so myself. Now, everything back here is only going to get bigger and bolder and more beautiful throughout the next few seasons. So I'm going to go over all the plants so that you know when they bloom and when they don't bloom. But if you are interested in any of these plants, it is all listed down in the description area for you to go catch because all of these plants can be done in a very minimal spot in your yard and all of these every single one of them can be planted in a container but what's more important is that all of these take very very minimal work once established the only biggest requirement would be is to water now i will go over the plants that do need a little bit of maintenance but it's not necessary to always do so let me go over each and every individual one I'm gonna start with the hookeras slash corabelle. This ones here are zoned down to zone four with some care, like mulching and maybe putting it in a little bit protected area, but it will still come back the following year. The majority of these outside of this one 
is sewn from five to nine. So I'll just take care of that right off the bat. But this one here is going to be in bloom here soon. It adds a lot of winter interest as well as summer interest. The beautiful Brenra over here. Jack Bra. Oh my gosh, these are my favorite right back here. These ones are gonna get twice the size. These are done blooming for the season, but come spring, they're gonna have these beautiful blue flowers. And every year, they're just gonna get bigger and better. And they are deer resistant and rabbit resistant. They're snail resistant. Who can't beat that? Because snails can really cause havoc for your plants. This one, they just don't like it because of the roughness of the foliage. But this is a beautiful plant to have. Now, the lamium, this is a beacon silver. It's just going to fill in throughout this area. Look beautiful. This is a profuse bloomer, but just the foliage in itself is gorgeous. The Kona, the Kona uh, grass, Japanese grass here, does not bloom, but it adds a lot of garden interest. This can also be done in a container. The foliage is super soft. It just cascades over over time and it just looks beautiful in any garden whether it's a rock garden a container or just as a uh, plant in a border uh, garden the oak leaf hydrangea this is a ruby slipper this is going to get about five feet by five feet wide and tall this one here is now starting to get into bloom this is very very low maintenance this is the least amount of work out of all the hydrangeas, and this is why I love oak leaf hydrangeas, because they are so easy to care. The only thing you want to do after the uh, flowers have faded in the summer is to snip off that old flower. However, I leave it for winter interest, but if you are looking to downsize the plant, that is the time you want to do it is in late summer, after the blooms have faded. The window is very small, so you don't want to do anything with it, otherwise you'll lose next year's bloom. But that's not even necessary. The only thing that I do come springtime is I clip off the old dead faded flower from last year's bloom and I cut off any dead branches that are obvious dead branches. Outside of that, I don't do a thing with it. This requires some moist soil, but mulching around it will help retain that moisture. Just give it a good drink of water and it's good to go once a week, once established. All three of these hostas are going to look gorgeous when they get bigger and start filling in and overlapping each other. This one's going to get about 30 inches in diameter. This one's gonna get 36 inches in diameter. This one's going to get 24 inches. So once it fills in this whole entire spot, it's just look, it's just going to look gorgeous. In fact, the lysometria might even be underneath it over time. So this is going to fill in all this area so beautifully. Now, over here I have a bleeding heart. This one's going to fill in this area. Maybe get another foot taller as uh, next season comes along and it'll bloom this beautiful red to pink uh, parts. And that one is done blooming for the season. It comes next spring. That's going to bloom very beautifully. And then, of course, we have the Orangeola Japanese Lace Leaf Maple here. This one here, over the next 10 to 15 years, is going to get 6 feet by 6 feet. So it's going to fill in a good portion of this spot. Now, this does look a little hidden back here, but over time it's going to be just a good focal point. This one here will start off with green foliage, then it'll start turning red over the uh, summer months, spring, late spring, summer months, and it will have still some green variations, and then come fall, this thing is going to be bright orange. And I really hope that I can come back in the fall to show you what this looks like. If I knew about this when I was starting to plant Japanese maples in my yard, this would have been one of my top choice. But it's going to look really nice in here. 
Now, let me go back to the hostas here. Because the hostas, as far as care is concerned, the only thing you have to do with hostas is when the foliage in the fall completely flops over, is that you cut that foliage off. However, it's not always necessary to do. I do it because if you don't, it could potentially um, rot the, the bulbs on it and then you ended up ruining your hosta. But people, including myself, have left the dead foliage down and it just mulches into the ground, puts nutrients into the ground, and it's never done harm for any of my hostas. But it is probably still a wise thing to do. It's a very minimal job. So that's the only thing with hostas. Um, the Japanese fern, painted fern here, this one has beautiful colors in it. It's got reds, it's got that silver, and it is just starting to really get its foliage out. And this is just gonna be stunning year after year. Now this one will die down every year, but it'll come back every year. So when you have a Japanese painted fern, always mark it so you know where it's coming from as well as your hostess. But yeah, this is gorgeous. I love, love, love this fern, of all ferns. This is one of my favorites. Not only because of its colors, but because it just looks like this little angel in the garden. And then again, the Brenra. Brenra is going to get twice the size next year and continue to get up to maybe almost like I would say I have one in my yard that's probably very close to three feet wide and it will get pretty tall but this is beautiful and then over here I have and I'm going to put the name down on this particular uh, lamium over here because this is still a lamium uh, dead nettle but it does have a variation in color but it still is a profuse bloomer it still is going to bloom the same beautiful pink flowers i just thought that the, having a variation of colors here would be much better this one has just a stripe of white and then overall green so it's just going to add to this whole little area and it's just going to fill this whole area up beautifully and it's going to also shade the lysimachia chocolate persian because those actually require deep shade. So right now, it'll still bloom, but it'll be better bloomer come fall. So all three Lysimachias, if you want a deep shaded plant, this is the plant for you. Okay, you guys, that's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your love and support. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give me a big like. That really helps me along my channel. But most of all, you guys, get up, get out, get active. Build yourself a beautiful little garden spot. And if you don't have a garden spot to plant in, all of these, every single one of these plants here can be put in a container in your porch or in your yard. Wherever you have a little nook and cranny to put a container in, this will do just great. Just got to water them a little bit more when they're in the container, but they will survive in a container. Okay, you guys. Mm, I love you. I'll see you guys next time.